So for my big video this week, I think it's time to really, really address the fact that AMD is not sitting still. I'm really getting tired of this, right? Um, you see all of these people, and, I, and a lot of times I think they're Intel fanboys, or perhaps, and I do think this is true, a lot of people just can't come to terms, and I don't mean it in a negative way, they're just so used to Intel destroying AMD that they can't believe AMD is ahead now and about to crush Intel, and that Intel must just have something hiding in their vault to take on AMD, which is of course utter bullshit. If Intel had something that could crush Ryzen right now, my god would it be out. They are not happy with losing this much market share, and if rumors are to be believed, AMD is about to take major server market share, which is where all the money is made, and Intel is not happy about that. And I think where a lot of people's predictions that Intel is about to come back come from is forgetting that AMD is not sitting still. Their performance is a moving target, and I think that's where a lot of failures, just in general, in rumor analysis, predictions on hardware come from. People forgetting that these things, that you're shooting at a moving target. This is like time moves. What AMD is trying to do moves. You can't just project, and it goes for like the PlayStation 5 rumors too. You can't just say, well, it's going to have this, this, and this, because that's how much this costs now. You have to think of how much things might cost in two years. Where are we going to be in two years? And... Let's talk about Intel. They're about to come out with Comet Lake, supposedly, which will, hey, look at that, add two more cores again. Ooh, how exciting. And there'll be the normal, like, 10 to 15% efficiency gain on, like, the newest 14 nanometer plus, plus, plus. And people see that and they go, well, 10 cores Intel, 10% uh, better efficiency and two more cores, they'll catch up to AMD. Well, no, not if AMD doubles cores as increases efficiency. They will not catch up to AMD. And this is where people make even more mistakes, is they say, look at Sunny Cove coming out, which I think will be mobile only. I think Willow Cove on, four, on 10 nanometer has a small chance of actually getting a desktop, though, but we'll get to that later. Look at, and look at Fovros. These things are going to come out and crush AMD, and they just think this could catch up with Zen 2. This could be 10% better than Zen 2. Well, Zen 3 is coming out next year. It's going to be AMD's Ivy Bridge moment. And don't forget what Ivy Bridge did. It increased performance by about 10% over Sandy Bridge, which no one really cared about. However, it pretty much doubled efficiency and doubled um, integrated GPU performance, which was massive. Ivy Bridge wasn't as big a deal as Sandy Bridge, but it was a bigger deal than like, you know, some of the minor architecture upgrades were. And the same is going to be true of Zen 3. Zen 3 is, the more we hear about this, is supposedly going to be on TSMC's newly announced 6 nanometer FinFET, which is really 7 nanometer EUV. Well, what does that get you? It gets you 18% greater logic density, and I think I read somewhere it might be 15% greater performance. Like, really, really minimal efficiency gains, like 10, 5% efficiency gains, but 20% more die space reduction. And you can do things with it. And if you wouldn't believe it, oh, look at that. AMD also announced they will be in, well, not announced. There's a rumor, I'm sorry, that AMD may be increasing die space by 20% with Zen 3, which they can do many things with. They could add one more core per CCX, making an interesting nine core CCX. Or they could even just make the die a little bigger um, and take that 20, 18% reduction, right? Like this might be a 20% increase in die size per CCX, but also a 18% reduction in transistor size, meaning they might make more IPC and a 10 core CCX. I actually think that's somewhat likely that AMD may decide to make it 10 cores instead of eight per CCX while also increasing IPC by 10%. Again, again, you know, AMD is not sitting still, and they may even go to 2D and 3D stacking with Zen 3, and certainly the rumors point to Zen 4 being on 5 nanometer EUV, which is already beginning risk production at TSMC. So in 2021, they could have a 3D stacked Zen 3 on 5 nanometer EUV. AMD is not sitting still, really. And, and I've seen the stuff Intel says they're doing, but it just doesn't impress me. So if I'm not getting my point across well enough, I want to now switch to a chart I made to really, 
really hammer home why I think Intel needs to be worried and why when people say Intel's adding this, I just don't care. So if I couldn't get my point across before, I'm hoping this rough estimation will get it through some people's heads. And it's uh, keep in mind, some of these numbers, I, I threw this chart together super quick. So some of it could be a little off, but I really hope my point gets across here. Let's compare AMD to Intel's roadmap, roughly. And I was really um, generous to Intel with some of these numbers. So, you know, going from Excavator, which was on 28 nanometer, and they had the 32 nanometer pile drivers at the time, you know, jumping to Zen 1 was just a massive improvement, right? You had the... Um, Double, I mean, it's effectively a doubling of IPC if you really look at it, at least doubling of single core performance. I mean, absolutely insanity. You had CPUs that were getting like 50 to 80 percent higher single core scores over pile driver while being clocked 20 percent lower. Like, this was a massive improvement. Um, and it came with the 14 nanometer process as well, double the density, 60 percent greater efficiency, in addition to a great architecture, right? Excellent, excellent work, Ren AMD. Meanwhile, Intel combated them, B same architecture, no improvements, two more cores, at best 15% greater efficiency. And that efficiency, I mean, at most reviews showed that 8700K was not a 95 watt chip, but at least it had 50% more cores, I guess. And it used like 110 watts or something, right? There, there. So 15%, I'm being nice. And a lot of their chips had almost no more efficiency than the previous replacements and then what happens well next year amd is not sitting still seven percent greater ipc greater memory support in the architecture density increase from 12 nanometer finfet process was about 10 percent which amd really just used to save money and a six percent efficiency gain very little efficiency gain uh from the 12 nanometer finfet uh, but it was there right you know you got like 10 percent higher clocks 7% greater efficiency and only slight TDP increases. A great increase. And what did Intel do again? Do more cores, no more IPC, 15% greater efficiency. In general, it does kind of seem like the 9900K at stock uses a little less energy than the 8700K. So there was definitely some kind of a binning improvement there. You know. And now let's move on to this year. What is AMD up to? I mean, almost a Zen 1 moment again. Double the cores, 20% greater IPC. Yes, don't yell at me. 10 to 15% gaming, 20 to 30% for AVX and a lot of other professional workloads, but the average is 20%, so come on. And this comes with the 7 nanometer FinFET process, which is without a doubt now ahead of Intel. 60% density increase, again, 40% greater efficiency gains. Intel, nothing. We'll probably get better binning, 15% greater efficiency, and two more cores again. And this is where it's going to get bad. For Intel, you're gonna have, and this is where I get annoyed, where people are like, "Well, if Intel, you know, if Comet Lake adds, you know, even five percent IPC, which maybe it will, but probably not, probably just another Lake with no IPC increases, you know, those two more cores, it's gonna beat the 2700X." Yeah, well, guess what? AMD's adding 20% IPC and doubling cores. This is not AMD is not sitting still. They are a moving target that Intel is trying to hit with just almost laughable at this point responses two more cores no better architecture and it's been better that's everything intel's been doing and then this is where people usually say well what about fovros what about sunny cove well first of all i don't think sunny cove is coming to desktop i think that's going to be mobile only but i'll say maybe willow cove maybe willow cove will make it to desktop next year and, 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 and we don't really know what it's going to be. And this is the problem, is Intel's throwing out all these terms. Fulveros, 3D stacking, Ice Lake, Tiger Lake, Sunny Cove, Willow Cove, blah, blah, blah. All these different architectures they're throwing out there with no information. <laughs> Go! I, I'll have it at the link in the description. Sunny Cove, it's like big increases in performance. Uh, definitely coming 2020. 10 nanometer, definitely on track. Like, I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. Like, so let's say Willow Cove increases performance by tw IPC by 20% and doubles the amount of cores. It doesn't matter. AMD is moving to Zen 3 next year. They're not sitting still. Don't compare Willow Cove to Zen 2. Compare Willow Cove to Zen 3. And remember that Intel hasn't hit any of their goddamn target dates 
like ever in the past three years. And AMD's hit pretty much all of them, all of their confirmed target dates. Navi's kind of delayed, but they never promised it was coming, you know. Anyways, Willow Cove's going to be competing with Zen 3, not Zen 2. And Zen 3 is rumored to have another 10% at least IPC increase, much greater efficiency. And we know it's likely to use the 16 nanometer, which is really 7 nanometer EUV process. And that brings an 18% increase in density. 18% increase in density. Guys. And the other rumor is that AMD is going to use a 20% larger die size for their CCXs. Do the math. What do you think is happening here? AMD is probably moving to a 10-core CCX, um, and that's what they're making the die size bigger for. But then it's also more dense transistors, so they're taking that 18% greater density to increase IPC. Zen 3 will likely be a mostly efficiency boost, a doubling of efficiency per core, but it's probably going to have more cores, a little bit more, and greater IPC. These 16 core Willow Cove CPUs with 20% higher IPC will not be competing with 16 core uh, Zen 2. They'll be competing with 20 core Zen 3 with IPC increases again. Again, and Intel's already going to be behind. That's not good. And then let's go to Golden Cove. Like, again, and I'm just speculating that it might even exist. The chance, I think there's a more than likely not chance, if you've watched my channel, that Intel's never getting to 10 nanometer for desktop, or at least they'll never bother with it. The rumor is that Zen 4 or Zen 3 Plus-ish is going to start doing 3D stacking. So I know Foveros is coming, guys, but it's coming to AMD as well. AMD's not stupid. AMD sees the 3D stacking future. And in fact, in fact, AMD has more experience 3D stacking than Intel does. They're already 3D stacking HBM. They already have experience with, they will have already had two years of experience with chiplets from Zen 2. Intel has less chiplet experience than AMD. If anything, AMD might make a 3D stack chip before Intel. Guys, AMD is not sitting still, and this will all be on the 5 nanometer process. So while I'm speculating about what Zen 4, Zen 3 Plus, and what Golden Cove might contain, we know AMD will probably be on 5 nanometer EUV in 2021. And we know that because TSMC is already entering risk production of 5 nanometer right now, which means they'll definitely be ready for prime time in two years, which brings AMD another 45% density increase, another 20% efficiency gain. There's a very good chance that Zen 4 in 2022 will have 32 cores on like AM5 with 3D stack tech. And Intel will just be getting to 7 nanometer, not 6 nanometer, not 5 nanometer. They will be two nodes behind. And guess what comes after that? TSMC just built a $20 billion foundry for making 3 nanometer. Now, who knows what delays might happen there? But five, you know, 3 nanometer in 2023, that's five years from now. I mean, it's quite realistic, I think. And that's probably where it will stop. But Intel will be three nodes behind by then. And, and to those that say, well, Intel may just get to five nanometer quickly. Maybe. But basically what you're saying is best case scenario, Intel manages to almost catch up with AMD's process technology. AMD is not sitting still. So in conclusion, AMD is not sitting still. You cannot compare Comet Lake to the 2700X. You have to compare Comet Lake, a 10-core chip, to AMD's 16-core Zen 2. When you th talk about Foveros or Sunny Cove, Real Oak Cove, do not compare that to Zen 2. Compare that to Zen 3, to 3D stacked Zen 4, because that's what they'll be competing with. AMD is not sitting still. AMD's roadmap has been very aggressive, and they've been executing on what they say they will when they say they will, very consistently over the past three years. Lisa Sue's running a tight ship. I can definitely not say the same of Intel. All, I mean, how many architecture terms do we have out there now? Canon Lake sounds like it's canceled, so then what? What's Comet Lake? Okay, and then there's Ice Lake, Tiger Lake, Willow Cove, Golden Cove, Sunny Cove. I mean, how many of these architecture names that basically just have a slide that says big improvements next to it, how long until we ignore these roadmaps until Intel actually delivers? 
I don't trust any of Intel's roadmaps because they've been, they could not have been more wrong over the past five years, which is the opposite of AMD. And whatever they do have coming out will be competing not with what AMD has now, it's what AMD is going to have in the next few years. And TSMC and even Global Foundries are not showing any signs of lacking innovation. Even Global Foundries has a 12 nanometer non FinFET coming out that sounds pretty comparable to TSMC 7 nanometer. Guys, uh, the AMD is not sitting still, and in, if Intel ever gets going, they will not be competing with what's out now. They'll be competing with what AMD has in the future, and what AMD has in the future sounds very scary for Intel. All right, please like, share, subscribe this video, um, support me on Patreon. If you do support me on Patreon, I have a Discord channel with a with a uh, section after the video talk where you can talk with me directly and other like-minded people. Thank you, and uh, yeah, have a nice day.